He's one of only two angels named in the Bible. He spoke just four words across scripture. He single-handedly defeated an army of 185,000. He is set to play a pivotal role in the end times. In this video, we will reveal seven facts about Michael the Archangel straight from the Bible that will surprise you. If you are as interested as we are in learning more about Archangel Michael, please like this video and subscribe for more biblical stories. Number one, the Hebrew meaning of the name Michael is who is like God, Mikadl. In Hebrew, the name Michael means who is like God. This rhetorical question highlights Michael's role as God's chief messenger and representative. As the archangel whose name asks, who compares to God? Michael proclaims the truth that no one rivals or equals the Almighty. When Michael utters his sole biblical quote, who is like God, in response to Satan, he reaffirms that not even powerful archangels can claim God's privileges. Michael's name encapsulates his mission to glorify the matchless majesty and authority of the one true God. So, every mention of Michael's name stands as a declaration that no created being, whether angel, demon, or human, is God's equivalent. Number two, the Bible only names Michael an archangel. According to Jude 9, Michael is called an archangel, which means chief angel or chief messenger in Greek. Though he is not referred to as an archangel anywhere in the Bible, another angel refers to Michael as one of the chief princes in Daniel 10:13 meaning that he is one of the most powerful angels. The word one of implies Michael has peers. However, the Bible does not specifically name any other archangels, supposing they exist. So, while Michael is certainly an important celestial being, the specifics surrounding the other archangels are unclear. Still, Michael's elevated status is mentioned several times, particularly in Revelation, where he leads an army of angels against Satan. Number three, Michael defeated 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in one night. The Old Testament book of two kings describes how the Assyrian king Sennacherib invaded Judah and threatened Jerusalem during the reign of King Hezekiah. When Hezekiah prayed for deliverance, God answered through the archangel Michael. Two Kings 1935 recounts that, that night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. This angel is identified as Michael, who destroyed the invading Assyrian army in a stunning victory for Judah. The passage illustrates Michael's immense power, as he alone vanquished 185,000 soldiers in one night. This miraculous feat demonstrates Michael's unrivaled might and his role as the warrior commander of the heavenly hosts, defending the righteous on God's authority. By annihilating the Assyrians, Michael rescued Hezekiah and Jerusalem in response to prayer, proving he wields profound physical and spiritual power to influence earthly affairs to align with the divine will. His dramatic victory over the Assyrian army highlights Michael as a mighty supernatural protector and champion for the people of God. I'd love to get your input on something that really stood out to me about Michael, so let me ask you this before we move on. Why do you think God chose Michael to defeat the Assyrian army? What does this say about Michael's abilities and character that he could accomplish such an incredible victory? The fact that God selected Michael for this vital task reveals the tremendous faith he placed in Michael as a warrior leader. Clearly, Michael demonstrated the strength, courage, and character needed to succeed. Now let's explore what else we can learn about Michael's admirable virtues. Number four, Michael only spoke four words in the entire scripture. Only once in the Bible is the archangel Michael expressly quoted in Jude verse nine. When arguing with Satan over Moses' body, Michael simply says, The Lord rebuke you. In response to Satan's arguments over Moses' burial, he says these four sentences concisely. Though Michael could have established his own authority as an archangel against Satan, he chose to depend totally on God's judgment and power. Michael's simple quote reveals his noble intentions. Rather than boasting about his own angelic prowess, Michael demonstrated humility and restraint by subjugating his own will to God's. 
His statements acknowledge God's infinite might in comparison to his own. Though formidable among angels, Michael followed divine order by leaving all censure and condemnation of Satan to the Lord. His word shows a dedication to faithful obedience over selfish ambitions. Michael prioritized honoring God's commands over his personal quarrel with Satan over Moses' corpse. So in only four words, Michael's lone scripture phrase reveals profound insight into his righteous character and unshakable commitment to God's will. Number five, Michael is the protector of God's chosen people, Israel. In Daniel's final vision, an angel reveals that in the end times, Michael described as the great prince who stands guard over the sons of your people will arise in defense of the Jews, Daniel 12, 1. This illustrates Michael's special protective role over Israel. As their guardian, prince, he watches over and shields God's chosen people, the Israelites. Though the Bible does not detail exactly what standing guard means, Michael's defense of Israel is shown in other scriptures through his actions. For example, in Revelation, Michael leads an angel army against Satan and defeats the wicked dragon in battle, preventing harm to Israel, Revelation 12, 7. And in Daniel 10, Michael helps another angel in response to Daniel's prayers, showing his aid for the people of Israel, Daniel 10, 12, 13, 21. Aside from physical warfare, Michael may provide less obvious protection for Israel by intervening spiritually behind the scenes or influencing events in favor of Jews when they are in danger or require divine intervention. Michael has proven himself a faithful supporter and protector of Israel throughout history, whether in the form of fighting angelic wars or providing more subtle instruction. His relationship with Israel is unique among angels, and his guarding of them continues to this day, as predicted, and will prolong into the apocalyptic era. Number six, Michael is in charge of many angels as a military commander. In the Bible, Michael is shown as an angel commander who leads them in military activities. In Revelation 12, 7, 9, John sees a huge battle in heaven between Michael and his angels and Satan, also known as the dragon, and his angels. This text depicts Michael commanding an army of angels who fight for God against demonic forces. Despite their resistance, Satan and his angels are unable to vanquish Michael's army or remain in paradise. Michael and his angels then threw Satan and his angels down from heaven to earth. This demonstrates Michael's control over part of the angelic host as a spiritual leader in warfare. His job as the leader of an angel army against immorality distinguishes him as a military commander among angels. Additional verses confirm the image of Michael as a military leader who leads angel warriors in eternal battles between good and evil. So, in passages such as Revelation, Michael is presented as a commander who organizes and directs angels in their battle against demonic power. Number seven, Michael plays a significant role in end time events. The Bible states that the archangel Michael will play a significant role in the latter times before Jesus returns in the book Daniel. An angel tells Daniel that Michael would arise during the great tribulation, which is a terrible time on earth. Michael will stand up for Israel and protect God's people at this time. When Jesus returns, there will be a resurrection, with some rising to eternal life and others to eternal disgrace. When Jesus returns for the Christians, the voice of the archangel will be heard. This could indicate that Michael will proclaim Jesus' return. So it appears Michael will be occupied in the end times, guarding Israel, resurrecting the dead, and possibly telling about Jesus' arrival, Michael is the leader of God's angel legions. Thus, it seems to reason that he will play an important role in the final spiritual fight between good and evil. According to the Bible, Michael will help God's people to the very end. Believers can take solace in knowing that this formidable archangel is on their side. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the biblical facts of Archangel Michael. As we close, remember that the stories of these celestial beings hold valuable lessons and insights. Whether you find strength, inspiration, 
or simply a renewed sense of wonder. We hope this exploration has enriched your understanding. If you'd like to continue this journey together, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Your engagement fuels our passion to bring you more profound narratives. Until next time, may the wisdom of Archangel Michael guide you.